Hey guys, hey guys here showing you how to replace a radiator on a 2009 Toyota Camry. This is a four cylinder. Uh, this is has the uh, 2.4 liter 2AZ FE engine. Um, it should be the same pretty much for any of the four cylinders that are in this body style which was made from 2006 I believe to 2011. Uh, in America, it could have been 2007 model year on through 2011, but uh, this is the XV40. Um, so that's the chassis this is. So if anybody in any other parts of the world, Japan, Australia, Germany, etc., wherever this car is at, um, this radiator does require you to take off this here front radiator support bar. Um, that's where you'll be able to gain access to the radiator. I've seen a lot of people actually take the entire bumper off. I, I don't know why. I, I mean, I suppose you could if you really wanted to have that much more room, but it is completely possible to do this without uh, removing the radiator, or excuse me, without removing the bumper. Um, the only parts that are probably gonna be hard to get at are the two screws that hold on the condenser you can see there's one right there and I can only see this because uh, the grill that goes in this portion here is, is not here but usually you would not be able to see those screws but that screw there and the other screw on the other side will be the difficult ones to get out if you don't have the bumper off but like I said once you take off the plastic on the bottom you you, you can just reach around and, and get those without an issue um, you can't really see them from here up top, but th they're down there as well But yeah, I'm not gonna take the bumper off and I don't recommend that you guys do either unless you really want to so um, The first thing we need to do is jack up the car get it on jack stands And then we can go on ahead and go down there in the bottom and remove the splash shield Okay, so when you got the car jacked up and you're underneath the car the main thing we need to get off is this plastic sheet shield, splash shield. It runs the entire front length of the car. Um, you'll see that it's held on by various 10 millimeter screws. Um, there's like one right here and one right here. There's one uh, also right here. And then there's usually three that are gonna be right in front of the tires. So three on the left side, three on the right side. Um, you, you'll pretty much see them. They're, they're not hard to miss. Uh, they're 10 millimeter uh, bolts and then about, about right here where this little indention is right here on both sides, there is a plastic clip um, that's also holding on the plastic shield. It uh, just requires you to use just a small flathead screwdriver to just kind of pick underneath it. There's a center portion that will pop down. You, you just use a screwdriver to kind of like pry it down and then you can just pull the clip out. So um, I can't really get a good angle at it because I don't have the car uh, so jacked up so high, but honestly, it's really not very difficult and you'll, you'll be able to see all the uh, little clips and pins you need to take off. Um, you'll probably just see me here in, in a time lapse just taking everything off anyway. So I'll go ahead and do that. got all of the clips off the bottom we're going ahead and get your drain pan and drain the radiator you can drain it by the petcock that is a little plastic piece kind of right right there in the middle of the uh, I know you can't see it it's just a plastic little small little uh, wing nut looking deal that's on the bottom of the radiator it's yellowish color you can just grab a pair of pliers and twist it to the left to um, start draining out the radiator. You don't have to pull it all the way out just enough and then 
also um, go on ahead and crack this open that way uh, it allows it to drain a little faster so I'll go on ahead and do that now okay while that's draining um, down there we can go on ahead and focus on removing this um, radiator support here up top um, there's really only four bolts that are holding it on there's two right here one here on the top one here on the side you won't be able to get at this one with a um, a ratchet unfortunately well maybe like a small quarter inch ratchet and a 10 I'm just going to use a normal box in wrench for that so you will they're all 10 millimeters uh, one two here three and four here uh, we'll be removing these guys last first thing we need to do is remove this here um, air intake snorkel it's just held on by two 10 millimeter bolts I do recommend that you get a uh, magnet if you don't have a magnet because you might drop these by accident. Once these are removed, just go ahead and just pull this straight off like that. It's a piece of cake. Um, what I like to do now is to actually loosen up the radiator hose because um, if you take this off, the top of the radiator loses its support. So it might be a, like a headache to try and like hold it and pull this hose off. Just grab a pair of pliers and take that off. Um, it doesn't really matter which side you remove, but since we're removing the radiator, I'm just going to remove this side because that makes the most sense. I loose and pull it off. And you can kind of just prop it over to the side for now, that's fine. Um, what I recommend for the bottom when you go to remove the bottom hose. Um, I wouldn't take it off from the radiator. I would actually just take it off right here from the thermostat housing neck. Um, it just makes it easier. It's easier to get, the, get to this one than the bottom one. And then once the radiator's out, you can just swap that hose over to the new one. Um, we can go on ahead and loosen up this here overflow hose. Just kind of grab it gently. Don't, don't squeeze it and just twist it a little bit and it should it just should pull straight off like that. You can just set this to the side as well. Okay, so now the next thing we want to do is if you loosen these up and you try and pull it off, it's not going to happen. Um, there are two horns right here that are uh, going to be key, uh, holding you up from taking it out. I've already loosened up and removed one of them. Um, it's a 12 millimeter bolt right here. There's one on this side. There's one on this side. This is where you also have to be careful. I mean, if the buffer was off, this would be easy to look at and, and hold, but uh, I'm not gonna take it off. So it's just use a 12 millimeter wrench to loosen up both of these horns. And then you can just, uh, you can just let them hang straight down because it's easy to reach your hand down there and, and grab them when you need to get them. So just loosen them both up. I mean, you're welcome to zip tie them up if you want, but I'm just gonna, just gonna let them hang there. hot out here today this is the horn one of the horns I'm just gonna like I said I'm just gonna let it hang straight down because you'll be able to grab it no problem later and um, you could just set the screws to the side remember there are two of these I've already removed one of them so uh, I'm just gonna set the screws aside now if you're looking straight down right here there is a plastic clip right here that would hold the hood release cable you want to just grab a pair of pliers, squeeze the little plastic tab, and it'll just go right out of the hole. Now the next thing you want to do is to take off three screws that hold this uh, hood latch on. There are two right here on the top that I've already loosened. You're going to need to use a 10 to loosen up. You don't need to loosen the one on the bottom of the latch, just the two right here on the top and the sides. And then there's one right here behind the latch right next to the spring. You need to loosen and remove all of these. 
Now I've, I've already loosened all this stuff up, so try to make the video go a little bit faster. The latch is just going to stay in place while you remove this here upper uh, radiator support. Okay, so everything now is attached and we can go ahead and remove these four screws that hold on the uh, radiator support. Just like so. Now this whole thing will kind of lift up. You'll have to maneuver it around the plastic pieces, but you see the radiator is now pretty much free. Uh, we'll just have to disconnect the fans and the front condenser. Uh, be careful when we get to that point. You know, I'll tell you again, you don't want to disc, you don't want to damage this condenser in the front because if you puncture a hole in it, you're going to leak all your Freon out for your AC, then your AC is not going to work. So do be careful when we get to messing around with the condenser so you don't damage it. You could just set this radiator support down to the side. Okay, now we can focus on getting the fan out. Um, you'll need to disconnect this one connector right here. Just push on the tab on the front and uh, it'll just pull straight out. If you follow it back here, there is a clip right here. This one's broke. There's a clip right here that holds the uh, wiring harness to the plastic. Um, you can use either uh, a flathead screwdriver, like a small flathead screwdriver, or you could possibly you could use. A, I mean, the, the correct tool is like a plastic trim removal tool. I don't use them, um, but you can use a pair of uh, side cutters like this to get behind the clip, and then kind of just pry it off of the plastic, so that way uh, you could still reuse them. There should be a total of three, and then straight down right here. There's another wiring harness that's connected to the motor. You need to also just push the tab and take the clip off. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. This is what the uh, little clips right here look like. Like I said, you could just get behind them and pry them off. Both of the connectors right here. You could just pull this stuff off and set it to the side. Okay, now it's time to uh, remove the radiator or excuse me, remove the fan assembly. Um, there's these little clips right here, these tabs. You kind of just push them in and slide the uh, fan assembly off just like that. There's three of them, one here, one in the middle, and one on the very side over here. And then you can gently maneuver the, push the fan away and just, it just sits in clips in the bottom. So just gently, you're gonna have to like maneuver it around the radiator hose and whatnot. But, um, you should be able to just lift it straight up. There is a little clip that holds it around the, that holds it on the radi lower radiator hose. You have to just maneuver the hose around that. But it's pretty simple to pull it out. Then you can just set it down to the side. Okay, so by now the radiator should be drained out. You can go on ahead and close the uh, petcock back. I'm just reaching down here and just shutting it. And you want to take these uh, rubber, upper rubber mounting bushings and just set those aside because you will be transferring those to the new radiator. Okay, the next thing you want to do now is to, you're going to have to get these from the bottom, is go underneath the car and you'll want to loosen up both these transmission cooler lines. Do remember which side goes to what as there is an in and an out. Um, they just are normal clamps, kind of like the radiator hose, just grab a pair of pliers and uh, pull them off. Um, you'll want to immediately turn them straight up facing the sky, otherwise you're gonna have a lot of transmission fluid. Well, not a lot, but you will have a steady 
uh, drip of transmission fluid coming out you don't want to lose all of that so just point them straight up into the air and zip tie them somewhere or uh, force them somewhere to where they're pointing up and also you'll have some transmission fluid that wants to come out of the bottom of the radiator as well so that's why I have a drain pan down here so it will catch whatever comes out um, if you do happen to have something like these I'll grab two of them out If you do have something like these, these are hose clamps. They pinch the line so nothing comes out without damaging them because they're just made out of plastic. I will be using these to stop the fluid from coming out, but not everybody has these, so um, that's why I say to just take it and point it straight up into the air. If you want to grab some of these, they're, they're usually like five or six bucks for a set of three. You can buy you know, two sets of them, so you'll have two small ones they come small medium and large ones i don't know where my large ones are at at the moment but i do have them but yeah so if you have these then go by all means use these if you don't then that's fine just point them straight up into the air so they don't leak everywhere so i'm gonna go ahead and get those off now Okay, we got those off. What I suggest is going into your new radiator. It will usually come with new cap. It will usually come with caps that will block these off. So grab the caps off the new radiator and just stick them over these for now. They won't stop the fluid completely, but it'll help a little bit. Just keep your uh, drain pan under here just in case. Okay, so. We got those transmission lines off. The next thing you should do is um, take the hose. I, like I said, I would take it from here, from the thermostat housing. Take this lower radiator, radi lower radiator hose off. Uh, just one side. You can take this side off, and then I'm going to lift everything off, and I'll transfer the hose when I'm done. Or you're more than welcome to get the clamp down there at the bottom and take that out as well. It's entirely up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this and release this one now. Okay, I got that hose off and loose. So the only thing that now that's holding in the radiator, like I said, is the condenser bolts. There's one here, one here, and there's one right down there on the bottom, and the other one is right down there on the bottom as well. The ones that I showed you through the grill initially. Um, the two top ones are really easy to get to. Just use a ratchet or whatever you want. If you don't have a wrench and you need to use a socket, there is a little bit of room where you can lift this up just enough to get to the, um, to the uh, enough access to the bolts at the bottom. But like I said, these hard lines over here, these metal ones, you don't want to damage them. You don't want to crack them. You don't want to bend them. Otherwise you will not have working AC because you could potentially crack it and all the Freon comes out. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these four screws now. After you do that, the radiator is free to pretty much, you know, push towards the engine a little bit and then just lift it up off of its little rubber mounting tabs on the bottom.
Okay, after that is done, like I said, the radiator should now be free to lift straight up and out of the way. Remember to keep it tilted with all the ports laying upright. That way you don't get this transmission fluid falling everywhere. These little rubber guys were on the bottom of that old radiator, so don't forget to take them off and transfer them to your new radiator as well. I actually just like to stick them back down in the frame. Try your best to make sure these bottom uh, mounting holes line up. So now what you want to do is line uh, these bolt holes back up to the condenser and reinstall the condenser. Okay, so I'd like to note that. Now whether or not this be the right radiator or maybe they just got it wrong, this particular mounting spot over here is not going to work. It's not wide enough to accept this here tab. So I'm gonna just snip off this little plastic tab on the left side. That way the right side still has something to grab onto. It has no effect on the integrity of the radiator, but I need to be able to mount the condenser back where it belongs. So this should work now for me. Like so, two top ones are done. We'll go ahead and line up the bottom ones and we should be done. Okay, I got the uh, condenser back reattached and everything's ready. Um, you can go on ahead now and reattach the transmission cooler lines. Um, I'm not gonna show you how to do that. You just slip the hoses back on um, the same ports and then um, just move the clamps where they need to be. It's pretty straightforward, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, I got the uh, Two transmission cooler lines back on. Next thing you'll want to do is to slide the uh, radiator fan assembly into place. There are two there are two tabs on the bottom of this here and here that slide down onto two slots on the radiator. So just take your time that you don't damage the radiator and get these into place. It might take a little bit of maneuvering especially around the lower radiator hose with this here um, clip toward sort of deal. All right, once you're confident you got that into place, remember the top just snaps straight into place over these here clips, just like so. And you can go on ahead and grab the uh, wiring harness from the side over here and reattach everything back to where it came from. Now the next thing I want to do is to grab the radiator support and uh, put that back into place. Now if it, if it makes it easier for you, um, what I would like to do is to snap this here uh, connector into place for the uh, Hood release cable now, so because it'll be hard to grab it later. Just pop that little guy in place currently, and it, it's actually easier to grab the two horns now and um, get those started in place. You don't have to tighten them up now, but just start it in place. So you reach down and grab them, and then you can just mount them back into place now. That way, you're not trying to fight with no room later on. So you can just start them now, you don't have to tighten them up all the way. Be careful you don't damage your uh, condenser. Okay, once those are started, you can go ahead and just slip the uh, radiator support back down into place. There will be little clips of plastic you need to go around on both sides. And, oh, 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 wait, 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 before you do that, I almost forgot. 
the rubber bushings that go on top of the uh, radiator need to be put on. That's my bad. And you'll have to pretty much push the radiator into place so it lines up in these holes while setting down the uh, radiator support bar. Okay, that side's on. Okay, both sides are on now. Double check that your hood latch lines up correctly, and it does. So we can go on ahead and put the four screws into the um, radiator support now. Um, get all four of them in first before you start tightening stuff up. That way you know everything is lined up. Get them all up. Okay, that's all tight and secure. I'm going ahead and tighten up the horn bolts. You can go on ahead and reinstall the upper radiator hose. Just remove whatever cap that's on the current hose and just grab the hose and put it back on. To reconnect the overflow hose. The only thing left to do now would be to um, put the air snorkel back on, which we'll go ahead and do that now. This guy just slips right back on into place and two 10 millimeter bolts here. Then you want to just go on ahead go down to the bottom and just reinstall the plastic shield back into place. That's pretty self-explanatory as well. Just the, uh, the clips and the 10 millimeters to get it back on. Um, other than that, everything else um, should be good and ready to go. You just fill it up with coolant. Uh, fill this all the way up until it gets full completely. Um, you might have to squeeze a lower radiator hose, upper radiator hose just to get some air out and just fill this up until it's all the way at the top. Go on ahead and fill this reservoir up until the um, there should be like a max line that should be on there. I, I, I can't really see where the max line is at, but there should be one on there. Go inside, start the car up, turn the heater all the way to max hot and turn the fan speed to, to about medium. Don't turn the AC on, um, just heat and uh, just let the car run. You'll come back out here. This will probably most likely be um, getting drawn into the system. So just top this off as needed. Leave the cap off. Top it off as needed. Run it for about, oh, about five or 10 minutes or so with the cap off. And um, at that point, you can put the cap back on, close the overflow back up, and then just let it run until um, you get good heat out of the heater. You just want to get it to heat cycle once, make sure the fans come on and all that good stuff. So yeah, if um, this is your first time here, I appreciate you stopping by. Um, I try to make videos, uh, you know, I try to make videos every week. Uh, sometimes I've been, I've been real busy lately, so uh, I haven't been able to put them out as fast as I'd like. But yeah, thanks for sticking with me and I appreciate your guys' support. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, just ask them in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.